Polkadot. Polkadot is a blockchain that competes with Cardano and Ethereum is uh, becoming the top blockchain, but they also want to integrate Cardano and Ethereum in their blockchain. So they are really focused on interoperability and that is one of the main differences that uh, Polkadot offers. Why is it named Polkadot? Polkadot is a, is a pattern, as you can see here, where dots of sometimes the same pattern and sometimes different colors uh, in a different pattern are connected with each other. So that is the reason why it's called Polkadot. So this is the main website. Um, so yeah, Polkadot is already live and running. Uh, we can all see it because it really crashed in into the, the top 10 market cap of, um, of tokens. Um, this is some of the main points for Polkadot. So they want to have true interoperability. Polkadot enables cross-blockchain transfers of any type of data or asset, not just tokens. So they really want to make all the blockchains one. Like currently, um, there is a couple of different uh, blockchains as we have Zilliqa, we have uh, Ethereum, we have Cardano, that all built their own projects that are a little bit faster. And what Polkadot wants to do is to create one big web for all these blockchains to at least uh, communicate with each other. Um, economic and transactional scalability. Polkadot provides transaction scalability by spreading transactions across multiple parallel blockchains. As you can see or listen to the video that I created regarding Zilliqa, they have a sharding system. So Polkadot has a parallel blockchain system where they uh, are able to provide faster transactions by verifying the transactions by smaller blockchains. Um, just the way as Zilliqa did it with shards. This is something to, to scale. So it means that the more nodes and the more people start investing and staking their, their currency, um, the blockchain doesn't get slower and in some cases even only gets faster. Um, so it's based on easy blockchain innovation, create a custom blockchain in minutes using the Substrate framework, connect your chain to Polkadot and get interoperability and security from day one. So they are really also focused on creating like an easy understanding programming language to create a, a blockchain within 15 minutes, at least that's one of their promises. The same way as the, there is different frameworks on the internet to, to make your own website quickly by adding basic details. This is what Polkadot wants to perform as well. So it really wants to become one of the most easy and simplified blockchains to set up. So forkless and future proof, Polkadot can update without hard forks uh, to integrate new, new features and big uh, fix bugs. This capability enables Polkadot to easily adapt to changes and upgrade itself as better technologies become available. So Ethereum and Bitcoin have forks. So once the, um, the, the network and the community discusses that there has to be taken a, a change to either get faster transactions or update the way the system works, um, Polkadot can make this without a, a fork, where a fork means that the original system goes one direction while the other system goes the other direction. Um, and Polkadot doesn't need this, it will just update the main framework and continue the main framework, which is a, a good thing in my perspective. Um, security for everyone, Polkadot's novel data availability and validity Scheme allows chains to interact with each other in a meaningful way. Chains remain independent in their governance, but united in their security. So if you build on top of uh, Polkadot, you will have your own rights and governance of what you want to do in your blockchain, but Polkadot will still provide you the security of being immutable for, uh, for any attack. User-driven network governance. Polkadot has a sophisticated governance system where all stakeholders have a voice Upgrades to the network are coordinated on-chain and acted autonomously, ensuring that Polkadot develops, uh, reflects the value of the community and avoids the stagnation. So what they really want to do is that the community, so the programmers that work on top of, the, um, of uh, Polkadot, have the rights to vote to go in a certain direction or to upgrade certain uh, spaces. Then let's go to the about. So Polkadot is built to connect private 
and consortium chains, public and permissionless networks. So private blockchains are blockchains that are only accessible for people that are invited um, and public blockchains are available for everyone so you can just buy in. The same as that you have private companies and public companies. So a public company is a stock that you can buy on the stock market. A private company, uh, you need to be invited or con contact the, the private company to see if there is a possibility to buy a stake in the company. Polkadot facilitates an internet where independent blockchains can exchange information and transactions in a trustless way via the Polkadot relay chain. So they really want to facilitate for independence, as I earlier said, to easily create their own blockchain on Polkadot. So this is the team. Um, the only person that I really wanted to discuss is uh, Gavin Wood. The, the other co-founders don't have a lot of information or experience in the industry. But Gavin Wood is actually the person that created the, the coding language Solidity, which is the language of Ethereum. So that is the language that you need to know to build on top of Ethereum. So he knows a lot about uh, coding languages and how to simplify and improve the, the, the written language. Um, so he was also the co-founder and CTO of uh, Ethereum. He invented fundamental components of the blockchain industry, including Solidity, Proof of Authority, Consensus, and Whisper. At Parity, Gavin currently leads innovation on Substrate and Polkadot. He coined the term Web 3.0 in 2014 and served as a president of the Web3 Foundation. So there is other information if you want to know more about Gavin Wood, go to Web3 Foundation or to Parity, which are other organizations that he co-leads. Then let's go to the token. What can you do with the token and what rights do the, do, does the token give you if you buy? So it has governments. As I said, uh, Polkadot token holders have a complete control over the protocol. So you have uh, voting power on the, on the protocol. The moment you add, you own Polkadot. Uh, obviously, the more Polkadot you have, the more voting power you have in the system. Um, you can do staking. Game theory incentivizes a token holder to became, behave in an honest way. So good actors are rewarded by mechanism whilst bad actors will lose their stake in the network. So if you're staking in a network then and you behave well, so you're not attacking the, uh, the Polkadot or hacking Polkadot, you will get rewarded with stakes. But if you're a bad actor and you, you really try to push uh, changes in a bad way in the network, you might lose all your stake. Uh, new parachains are adding, added by bonding tokens. Uh, outdated or non-useful parachains are removed by removing bonded tokens. So to build on top of the Polkadot blockchain and to make your own token, you have to put uh, Polkadot as a, as a backup. So that will be stored in a smart contract and in return you, you get the tokens. And this also says that it practically updates the network if tokens are not used, if no longer are, they are no longer built. And it's practically like a cleanup of the Polkadot blockchain. Then let's go to this uh, article, which is um, a little bit old article, but I still wanted to share some information. So this year alone, and this is 2020, over 200 projects have been funded through the blockchain's various grant programs and treasuries. Polkadot Treasury alone funded a total of 23 proposals with over 118,000 dots in the last few months alone. So in a few within the last months of, of 2020, it, um, it funded 23 proposals. The Web3 Foundation, so the, which, uh, the foundation that, um, that the, the CEO also manages, ongoing grants program has granted uh, 4.1 million to 145 different proposals, which would said. The high number of grants are directly a result of a huge per, uh, percentage of circulating dot being staked. So a lot of the, the DOT is currently being staked in the network to verify the transactions. On the last day of 2020, 63% uh, of the 1.03 billion DOT in existence are locked into staking systems. And another 10.4 million DOT sit in Polkadot Treasury and ready to spend on 
community proposals. This means that uh, the supply of uh, the free supply of Polkadot is uh, is less than half of of the total um, supply that exists, which is a good thing because it means that a lot of the Polkadot owners are um, holding it and staking it. Um, interoperability is a major goal for 2021, so they are really uh, focusing on um, on Ethereum and blockchain to interoperate with uh, the Polkadot network. While Polkadot is the first and foremost heterogeneous sharded multi-chain, one of Polkadot's uh, chief aims is to facilitate interoperability. So it means that although they are competing with Ethereum and other blockchains, they are also really willing to cooperate cooperate with them. So people that choose to stay on that um, network can still profit from Polkadot. The interoperability is referring to means of interoperability both between Polkadot's own um, consistent parachains and other blockchain platforms. So you can uh, cooperate with as much the main Polkadot system as Polkadot based um, blockchains. While the company plans on connecting to multiple different networks, Ethereum remains its biggest goal. Parity's Ethereum substrate compatibility program called Frontier is now almost completely done. So that is the first phase, Ethereum. And the second phase I read is um, Bitcoin. One of the biggest development hubs for Polkadot is most definitely in China. So their biggest development is in China, which now hosts 30 different teams building system projects and various components for Polkadot ecosystem. So they're still building a lot uh, of new systems and uh, 30 different teams is a, is a big amount. So knowing that, let's go to the, to the Twitter. This is the Polkadot Twitter. They have 207,000 followers, which is, uh, which is a lot. But yeah, as, we, as you know, this is a top 10 uh, blockchain based on market cap. And they are um, they're sharing a lot of, uh, of information uh, about explaining uh, new projects that are released. So it's, a, it's a quite an active Twitter. Then let's go to DOT, so, which is the token of Polkadot. Um, we can see that it is uh, it's down today. It has uh, almost the, the total circulating supply is almost equal to the to the maximum supply. So there is only a few polka dot more to to be mined. People are relatively positive about uh, polka dot, and if we look on the long time frame, we can see that it really. Uh, became a shooting star uh, from December 2020 and it only got up ever since. Um, yeah, the, 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 the circulating supply is a little bit uh, more than Ethereum and Bitcoin. So if you want to compare value to based on uh, circulating supply, I would say that Polkadot is worth at least uh, $100. So that's still like more or less uh, 200% gain, a little bit less. Then if we go to trading view, we can see again this uh, really fine lineup where it almost finds support on the on the same level since uh, 2020. So it's a really stabilized grow and actually every time it touches the, the green support line, it would be a great opportunity to jump in. As you all know, buy the dip, it's, a, it's an important um, strategy to keep investing and that was it um, so yeah Polkadot overall is a is a little bit a complicated project if you go really into uh, deep into the the matters um, I'm still looking into it more and I kept this presentation quite uh, basic and if you have any questions please uh, please respond and uh, leave a comment have a nice weekend and uh, bye